Hi guys, you are welcome to Hello Genius Ideas. In this tutorial, I will quickly show you how to run VS Code, Visual Studio Code on your Android device and you will also be able to edit files in your local storage. Okay, So the first thing to do is to ensure that you have Tamox installed. Um, if you don't have Tamox installed, you can just go to your Play Store and um, just look for the app Tamox. So this this one over here, just click on install and give it some time to install. Just some time and um, it is going to begin the installation. Just wait a bit for it to finish the installation process. Uh, okay, very good. So just open it. Um, okay, so just wait for it to install all the bootstrap packages. Okay, wait for it to install all the bootstrap packages that is required for it to function properly. As you can see, I have Tamox installed on my device and I've opened the Linux interface. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do is to give Tamox storage access. Okay, access to your files, to your um, file storage on your local, um, on your local host, which is your phone basically, because we want VS Code to be able to work with files that can be stored locally on your device. Okay, so that is what we want to do, and to do that, just run Tamox. Tamox setup, then storage. Tamox setup storage, and you have to give it permission to allow access to um, to your files. So. On some Android devices, you will get a, a prompt like allow or um, not allow or something like that. So in my own case, I just have to come here to select Tamox, then allow access to manage your files, then go back, go back. So to be sure that this is working fine, all I have to do is ls. If you are getting storage here, then it means that um, it works properly. Okay. So after doing this, the next thing we are going to do is to update and upgrade the um, Tamox packages. So apt, update, okay, then I can also just combine apt, upgrade, okay. So just give it some time to do all the update and the upgrade. So um, you are going to be needing all these particular spaces. Then I'll just type yes, install, then just give it some time to install all the necessary packages. So when it gets here for this openssl.cnf, you can just press no, you can just press no, then Okay, for this one, you can also press no. Okay, so um, I believe everything is working um, just fine now. Okay, so um, the next thing we want to do is to install Nano. Nano is installed by default on Tamox, but just pkg install install Nano. Okay, just in case you don't have Nano installed. So, in in Tamox, Nano comes by default. So, I think that should do for it. Then the next thing we want to do now is to install Tor repo. Okay, Tor repo. Then we are going to install our code server. Okay, so I can just do something like um, pkg install install T U R then repo.
Okay, so just give it some time. Then the next thing we want to install is our code server, which is VS Code itself. So pkg install install code server. Right. So you can see the download space the download size and the space needed for all the necessary installation so this is going to be taking uh, more than one gig of your storage okay so i can just press yes continue yes so now you give it some time to do all the necessary installation okay so just wait for it to install all the required um, packages for the vs code to work properly as you can see, the VS Code is um, done installing now. So what we have to do is to run the code server. Okay, what we have to do is just to run um, the the code server. To start the code server, it's very simple. Just code, then server. No, code, server. Okay. Just go to any web browser of your choice. I'll be using Brave Browser. I'll be using Brave Browser. So this is Brave Browser. Come to your Brave Browser and type localhost port 8000. Okay, localhost port 8000. So localhost then colon um, port 8000 and just run it and you will see this, um, this um, screen over here where you are supposed to enter a password for you to be able to access VS Code on, on your phone. So what you have to do is very simple. You will check this particular file for the password, okay? You can see, just copy this particular URL, uh, this uh, file path, okay? Just copy this, then copy. Now, you will go back to Tamox, and please pay attention what I want to do. This is Tamox over here. So you open another, session okay just slide from the left side of the screen to the right it will open the sidebar okay you can see the part where the sidebar is flying in from just slide your hand like that just slide your hand like that and it is going to bring up this so just this plus sign over here click on it and you can see i have another section running okay running concurrently with the first one you can see the first one and the second one over here why that first one is running open the second one nano then that that uh, that part that you just copied that part that you just copied you can see so just enter you can see that it is not um, displaying properly so control x so it's supposed to be y a m l but for some funny reason it was just y a m so please just come back and correct it okay so the first time i used control x to exit so run it so you can see now that since the file path is correct i'm having the bind address the bind address is 127001 port 8000 which is localhost basically and you can see the authentication is by password and the password is this long thing that we have over here now one thing you can do is to copy this long thing that we have over here then you go and paste it inside the password field but what i would advise that you do is that you delete the existing password is that you delete the that existing password so just scroll to where you have that the end of it then delete it okay then put something simple something simple like um one two three four okay something this simple so how can you save control o we help you to save okay then you enter then control x for exit okay so if you do let me use the cat command let me use the cat command just to be sure that what we typed is is saved um, so cat you can just check the tamox linux command you can see the password is now one two three four so we can just use this password directly in um in the v, um in the vs code instance that is currently running so i'll simply go back to my web browser where i have localhost port 8000 then just type one two three four and submit it it will take me automatically to 
Okay, I'm supposed to restart my code server. Sorry, I'm supposed to restart my code server. So come here and um, just Control C. Okay, now restart the code server. Restart the code server. Very good. So come back here, then reload it. Cancel. Just come here and go back to that particular link. Then one, two, three, four, and submit it. So it will display the. Int you can see VS Code is now running. VS Code is now running. So you can see the file uh, panel, the extensions marketplace. If you click on this, you can see the extensions marketplace. Back to the file panel. If I want to edit get file um, options, you can see file whatsoever I want to do. Okay, whatsoever I want to do. So click this one back. I can also put it in desktop mode. I can come here and put it in desktop mode so that at least it will display all these things better okay to display everything better in desktop mode so you can see all the options that you have and you can see if you want to put it in dark mode or um, you can see dark mode so this is me using dark mode if you want to use dark high contrast you can just choose this one here dark high contrast this is the one i use personally on my desktop but i'll just keep it simple and leave it under light for now okay then i will go back to mobile view just to keep everything simple for now. So now that we have installed VS Code and it is running properly, okay, one thing that you might want to do is to open a folder in your local storage so that any edit that you're making here will be reflecting directly in your local storage. All right. So if you come to my local storage, I have my local storage over here. This is my internal storage. So my internal storage. So if you come on that document on my internal storage, that is my phone storage, not my memory card. Now my phone storage. So I can just so this particular folder now. If I want to open it in VS Code, internal storage, then documents. So come back to VS Code. I'll just come to open folder. You can see it is giving me this particular option over here. Okay. All I have to do is to click on storage. Then after clicking on storage, it will show everything, all the folders I have under storage it will show it, but I want to choose documents. So now I've selected documents and you can see that PyDroid 3 is a folder that I have over here. If you look at it very well, it's a folder that I have over here. So everything I want to do is in this particular folder. I can just say, um, okay. So it will open, it will reload that particular page in that folder that I've just selected, which is my documents folder, don't forget, which is my documents folder. So everything in my documents folder now, it will load everything here. You can see PyDroid 3, index.html, test.py, everything that I've ever done here, I can have it in, uh, in my VS Code. So if I want to, for example, run, maybe create an HTML file. If I want to create a folder, you can see this particular folder icon here. So I can just come here and say um, testing, then you see it has created the testing folder. Now let's go and confirm, come back here. You can see now I have the testing folder that was created just now. Okay, so anything you are doing in this VS Code, it reflects automatically. I can come here, create a new file and call it maybe test.html, run it. So you can see that test.html have been created. Come back here and open testing. You see test.html have been created. So after doing that, the next thing I want to do, I can just close this particular panel. Then if I want to write a bit of HTML, the auto completion uh, feature is active. So HTML, you can see HTML. So it's giving me all these options that I will get naturally in VS Code. So I can just select HTML5. So I think um, I will appreciate this thing more if I'm on desktop mode. So let me just select desktop mode, desktop site. So now I have it in desktop site. Now I have it in desktop site. 
it will reload everything just now okay you can see now i have it in desktop sites anything i want to do i can start to do it i can begin to add some style i can just say style it should give me the auto completion feature no style then just click on the style if you click on this you can see after clicking on the style i can begin to do all my styling and whatsoever i can open my panel I can open my panel and decide to add some other files, do whatsoever I want to do, write all my code over here and everything will be reflecting in my local storage in real time. Okay, it's going to be reflecting in real time. So this is basically it. This is basically it. Let me go back to mobile view. Let me go back to mobile view. Let me go back to mobile view. So, um, as you have in regular VS Code, as you have it in regular VS Code, all the file options are here. All the file options. So, you can see all the file options available and you can see the terminal where you have storage slash documents as well. If you have any extensions you want to install, you can just come here and um, let me close this one. You can see all the, the extensions marketplace. You can just come here, install any extensions you want, Python, whatsoever, and you just use it depending on um, the functionality you are trying to bring into VS Code. So that will be it for this particular tutorial. I've been able to show you how to run VS Code locally on your Android device. So don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions at all, please. The comment section is open for you to ask all your questions so thank you very much i'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now